Hi guys, Lazy Masquerade here. Before I start the stories, I want to say that this video is not for the easily disturbed amongst you. The deep web is home to many gruesome videos, forums, services, you name it. In short, this content won't be for everyone. As such, viewer discretion is strongly advised. Number 1. Let me start by saying that if you go on the deep web, you will inevitably come across something you don't want to see sooner rather than later. I've explored it quite extensively, and let me say that some of the things that you see there will stay with you for quite a while, maybe even change you a little, or at least alter the way you look at your fellow man. More worryingly, you might even find yourself becoming desensitized to these things that should disgust you. This is unfortunately what happened to me. You might think that you don't have any innocence left in you, now that you're an adult and not a child anymore, and now that you know all about the real world. But trust me, you probably have more innocence than you think. Don't kill it off by digging too far into the deep web. Anyway, as you'd expect, I've seen all the obvious stuff, and then some. Decapitation videos, cult recruitment sites, but one that a lot of people don't talk about much are crush vids. These videos feature women stepping on a kitten or rabbit or other small animal in high heels, usually against a glass table, and then they proceed to crush the animal to death. These are fetish videos for guys, and I suppose in some instances girls, who get a sexual kick out of this sort of thing. Now, before anyone judges me, I don't get that kind of enjoyment out of them but I supposed I've watched maybe four of these videos due to morbid curiosity. You know it's wrong to look, but you can't turn away. The same reason most of us have watched Two Girls One Cup, I suppose. It's interesting, but it's fucked. The most messed up one that I saw featured a woman sticking the heel of her stiletto through the eye of a baby cat. What was even more shocking was that this woman did it all with a smile on her face in such a jolly manner like it didn't even face her. Yeah, if you're an animal lover, stay away from these kind of things. Now, on to the meat of the story. One time, I received an invite to a website after chatting with some guy online. He told me it was something he thought I'd really like. Not really knowing what to expect, I followed the link. This was, as you probably expect, a mistake. The link took me to a site with just a video on it. The images were very poor quality and very grainy. In the video, there were four Chinese guys sat around a table in some crummy apartment. I'm pretty sure they were all drunk, and one of them was resting his head in his arms against the table. As the camera occasionally dipped downwards, you could see that the floor area beneath them was covered in a tarp. Nothing much else was happening. I wanted to skip forward because I was getting bored, but that's when I realized that you couldn't. This was a live stream. The guy who sent me the link said to keep waiting and just give it five minutes. So I popped open another tab whilst I waited and checked back on the stream every so often. At one point, when I clicked back on the video, there were only three of the men sat around the table, and a box had appeared above the video. The words in this text box were all in Chinese. I'm pretty sure it was Chinese at least. But I remember very distinctly that there were four boxes, each with numbers in them that kept changing. I didn't think much of that at first. Not long afterwards, the fourth guy returns to the table. He was now holding a revolver in his hands. He sat back down at the table with the other men and placed the gun on the table. You could hear the guy holding the camera saying something, but obviously I didn't understand what. He sounded very aggressive in his tone though, that's all I could really discern. Then there were a couple of other voices coming off camera chiming in too. The guy at the table who had brought the gun grunted something and spun the pistol on the table. That's when I realized this was a live game of Russian Roulette for some sort of gambling website. 
People would stake their bitcoins on what I assume was a 4 to 1 bet. That's what the changing numbers were at the top of the screen. The Chinese characters must have referred to the different guys at the table. And I assume the changing numbers was the amount of cash being staked on each player. Whether the money wagered was for that man to live or die is something that I can't answer. It was like something out of the fucking deer hunter. I couldn't believe it. But these guys didn't look like they'd been captured and forced against their will to play. They just looked like tired businessmen. Maybe they were a group of desperados who really needed cash. Or maybe they really were forced, I don't really know. I should have stopped watching at that point. But I guess I'm a glutton for punishment. The guy who the gun ended up pointing at put it against his head and pulled the trigger. The chamber was empty, so he was okay. Then the next guy took the gun from him. He didn't even fucking hesitate to stick the gun in his mouth and pulled the trigger. There was a brief flash. I don't know if anyone has seen the Bud Dwyer video, but it reminded me of that in the sense that there was a fucking fountain of blood coming out of his head. One little detail I remember was a small amount of smoke rising out of the man's mouth and nostrils as he collapsed back in his chair. A couple of people from off camera came in and dragged him away in his chair. I turned that shit off immediately after seeing that. I don't know if that's a regular thing that happens on that site or whether this was some type of one-off event that had somehow been advertised on the deep web to attract an audience. I do think about that video from time to time, along with a few other fucked up ones that I've seen. Like I said, this shit stays with you. Number 2 This post comes from a Reddit user who has surfed the deep web extensively. He describes his interactions with the deep web in shocking detail and recounts some of the most gruesome things that he's found on it. Here is one site that he stumbled upon. There is a website called Paul's Pressure Tank. The actual URL is different, so don't bother trying to find it. This Paul guy has created a pressure tank from scratch it has a lot of features, the obvious being manipulating pressure, but it can be heated up sort of like a brazen bull. For those of you who don't know what a brazen bull is, it's a bull made of brass with a hatch on top. The victim is thrown into it and the bull is heated up. The person is then roasted alive. Inside of Paul's tank, there is a camera and for a rather large amount of money, about two to five bitcoins, you can have a child, an adult, a teenager, basically anyone killed in the exact way you want. I don't know what it's capable of, but after seeing a person being roasted alive, and another being killed due to high pressure, I'm not interested in seeing any more. Allegedly, it has sprinklers that can fill the tank with a liquid of your choice. Acid, hot water, piss, anything but I'm not sure if that last part is true. All I know is what I saw. Number three. My first trip to the deep web was both very exciting and nerve wracking. I'd heard all the stories, but I still didn't really know what to expect. Turns out, there's a lot of dead links, as well as lots of spam, scams, and obviously drugs. So, unsatisfied, I dug a little deeper, trying to avoid all the screwed up snuff videos, CP, and gore porn. What I did find, however, was equally as eye-opening, and revealed to me how disgusting some members of the human race can be. I stumbled upon a very particular forum, it was a forum for people who were HIV positive. I clicked through to check it out, not really knowing what to expect since this was surely something that could be discussed on the surface web. 
What I found was not what I expected. And in all honesty, reading their posts made me feel sick. There was a group of gay men who were HIV positive, discussing how they intentionally passed the virus onto unsuspecting victims. They went on to explain in great detail their favourite techniques on how to do so. Here is what one particularly fucked up user posted. This is really heavy stuff, and I mean it when I say it made me feel sick. So listen at your own risk. I'm a biker, living in London, the UK, and I've discovered three major ways of positiving up an unsuspecting negative. The first, I discovered by accident, when I was fucking a guy and the condom broke. I said I was sorry, and I was. But later on, it made me smile. Then I was doing another guy, and the condom broke when I put it on. I fucked him anyway, feeling guilty and horny as hell at the same time. Then I started pricking the rubbers in their packets, so that when I started fucking, they'd split. But this doesn't always work. So now, to be extra sure, I go to clubs with a pair of nail scissors, pick up a handful of condoms, go to the toilet, sit down and carefully cut open the packets, remove the condoms, and snip off the tip. I then roll it back up and slide it back into the packet. Then, I look for guys who are into safer sex only. I've done hundreds of guys using this method over the years. The second method is more work, but more fun. I chat up negatives online who want to go bareback with another negative. I say, I tested negative one month ago. I think because I only go top, I've always tested negative. If they want, I tell them I'll pull out before shooting, but I never do. There's plenty of guys into getting fucked by a guy in biker leathers and a crash helmet, so I do them like that the first time. Then I get more intimate, smiling and kissing passionately. I make sure I fuck them at least five times. Then I stay in touch with them to see how they get on. I've done about 20 guys using this method over the years, and I've only failed once. When they tell me that they've tested positive, I say, Oh God, how did that happen? Do you think I should get tested too? Thank God for chat rooms. They can't see how much I'm smiling. There was, sadly, more to this story. And of course, there were more posts like it. But it only gets more disturbing from there. And I think you get the point already. After doing some research afterwards, it seems like other people have checked out the same forum as me, and had a similar reaction. So, if you want to check the rest of that post out and see how it ends, then you can do so with a simple surface web search, using a term like deep web forum post, and checking the images in Google search. I do recommend you don't do this, however, for your own stomach's sake. The world can be a pretty sick place sometimes. I think I need to go and watch a few cat videos or something. Hi guys, Lazy Masquerade here again. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, that was a small collection of accounts of what some people have found on the deep web. Uh, and it's rather horrifying to think that all this goes on under our very noses. Um, but there is a light at the end of this very dark tunnel, this very dark web tunnel, I should say. Um, and that's the fact that NASA has recently confirmed that they're going to be joining a US government project to index the dark web um, in a style similar to Google, and that should uncover a lot of the um, criminality going on there. So even if not now, maybe in the future we might be read or at least, you know, more read of some of this gruesome stuff going on in the world. Um, you can find an article about that NASA thing down in the description below, and you can also check out the artwork of Anthony Salinas via the links down there as well. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, all that jazz, and you'll hear from me very soon. So until then, surf safely, and remember, the best things happen in the dark.